Ellen DeGeneres has stolen your hearts with her interesting shows, but beyond her popularity, do you want to know how she spends her millions? Get through the video to unlock the bundle of surprises that are waiting to entertain you at this time. Stay tuned with the video to check out her crazy means of spending. You won't believe what's on the number one. 10. The Brody House enters the 10 on the list. Ellen DeGeneres' expensive purchase of Beverly Hills home costs $39.88 million, but the fashion inside geared her up to move her status to the next level through Brody House. The Brody House possesses extensive historical value from the year 1949, which was owned by wealthy art collectors Sidney and Francis Brody. With no wonders, the Brody House ranks up the top 5 houses in Beverly Hills that swipe out the vision of anybody. But then, the house was owned by Ellen only for 7 months. Later, she sold the house to Sean Parker for $55 million. And thus, she gained a profit of $15 million. Though Ellen DeGeneres enjoys her dollars, she always pays great attention to making investments that save their future. 9. Ellen DeGeneres' fondness in purchasing watches would grab the ninth position on her expensive things. She has a great fantasy over the luxury watches, which was revealed to Jerry Seinfeld on his Netflix show in 2018. These are not in the car. Uh, see, I told you, you shouldn't leave the keys in the car. She was wearing a 1969 Rolex Paul Newman Daytona with a steel bracelet ranging $175,000. With not a hold to her expensive watch interest, her collection covers Rolex Oyster Perpetual Day Date, Patek Philippe Aquanaut Travel Time, Patek Philippe Grand, and Rolex Yachtmaster 40 Everose. 8. Santa Barbara's home, located in the Montecito Hills area of Los Angeles, catches the 8th position of the Ellen's massive investment of $27 million. The initial price of the home was $35 million, but Ellen grabbed a great deal out of it. Santa Barbara home designed with the blend of Balinese and Asian styles, spanning 8,818 square feet, with three bedrooms and sprawling outdoor ponds. There is no other way you miss out to impress with home because of its black limestone, bamboo ceilings, oak floors and Afromosia wood. Apart from this, Ellen doesn't spend much time in this house, but she considered the house as a long-term investment. She has no idea to put this on the market, as she and her wife hold no idea of losing a soothing gateway pad. You may wonder how she moves back and forth between these two houses. 7. Well, you might hit your head to know the answer, we give the right one. Ellen prefers to use a chartered plane for short trips, or she and her wife moves for a fun drive with her driver. Ellen admits her love over the car, adding a note that she is not crazy as other celebs, and Porsche Cayenne is the most expensive car she purchased. Ellen has had a great admiration for a long time for the German car brand Porsche, and she preserves few cars in her collection. Her expensive purchase of the Porsche rated $84,000, featuring twin 4.8 liter V8 with a 550 horsepower. Despite her car, Ellen admits that I don't really speed that much, but I was speeding one time and I got rid of a ticket after the police officer identified me. By cracking out her speeding skills, her fans fail to notice her when she drives over 100 on the highway. 6. Sharpen your sixth sense and now it is time to know the sixth position of Ellen's spending that is none other than vacations. Drink it. Lemonade. Is it good? It's <laughs> stupid. The generous is known for her hard work and at the same time she also refreshes her mind by taking a romantic off from her duties with her wife Portia, logging their favorite locals. The couple flies all over anywhere in Europe and this year they enjoyed a few days in Amsterdam. They resembled to shower the pleasures when they paid a visit to Kenya last year and the pair visited Mallorca, Spain in 2018. Though the couple seems to enjoy their trips, Ellen prefers to maintain the privacy of her personal life. 5. If you speculate, Ellen's donations might rank number 5, then it is right. Ellen is very charitable and has extended her hand to help dozens of people who need support over the years. She sustained as a rising sun in helping out the 50,000 military families that lived in poverty. With her caring nature, she aided $1 million to Hurricane Harvey victims, along with the 25,000 scholarships started off her list. In the note of Ellen's 60th birthday, her wife intends to preserve and analyze the dangers of Mountain Gorilla through Ellen Fund in the year 2018. Hook up eyes to check out the upcoming listings. 
4. Ellen is also popular for giveaways to her audience, which hangs forth on the list. She preserves as the favorite among the audience to amazing them with fantastic gifts. In December 2017, she offered 6 night trips for 425 people to Dubai, whereas in the year 2016 the place was Abu Dhabi. Last year she offered 1 million dollars to her viewers stating that you're all going to share this gift, it's the biggest gift I have ever given anybody and I hope you continue to pay it forward and share all the good. It is an exciting cash deal of breaking down 1 million dollars into 2500 bucks for each person, where it is completely free to attend their show. Spindling your head? Get ready to watch the other means of spending her millions. 3. Ellen's Thousand Oaks Horse Ranch wins the third position of the list. By considering the high-valued assets, Ellen purchased a 16-acre horse ranch located in Los Angeles in 2008 for $8.5 million. From the year 1920, the historic ranch stepped out by many celebs including William Powell. During his ownership, the ranch transformed as a monastery, then as a rehab center followed as a bar. The horse ranch was purchased by Ellen and her wife, spending plenty of time in that place. A huge amount is spent on renovation. Ellen added a note to Vogue magazine as We lived in every cabin as we decorated and restored them one by one. When we finished one, we had moved in and begun work on the next. The first cabin we lived in did not have a kitchen, a bathtub or any other amenities to speak of, but it was fun. Move down further and get ready to check out the top interest of Ellen's spending ideas that pedals up her fame in her shows. 2. There is another interesting property that catches the second position of Ellen's property aunt. Ellen DeGeneres and Portia bought the house in Beverly Hills at the rate of 29 million. But the couple felt they need more space for their property. Astonishing what Ellen would have done, she simply purchased the adjacent houses that cost around 48 million dollars, which lead to the expanded layout 9200 square feet, where they lived for 5 years. Ellen marketed the house for an offer of just 38 million dollars to Ryan Seacrest in the year 2012, which resulted in 10 million loss. In the same year there was a price drop over the houses in Los Angeles, but then Ellen grabbed the best deal out of it. One. Now, the top on the list is nothing but Beverly Hills Mansion. This place serves as an ideal spot to overlook the morning view of the city while enjoying the sunset besides the fireplace with your partner. Well, Ellen DeGeneres is considered as the wealthiest celebrity on television. And at the same time, she also makes a killing investment in the buying properties across Los Angeles. If you come to know the net worth of Ellen is $450 million, then your eyebrows will jump to the ceiling hold on tight. We know that few sellers make money out of the trade, whereas Ellen executes a wise investment plan with the money she earned out of her Ellen DeGeneres show. The investment principle followed by Ellen is quite interesting and she makes her majority investments in the opulent estates. DeGeneres comes from a humble background life, which made her possess an expedient idea to spend her earnings to taste the fortune. She subtles her thoughts by saying, I'm always going to get just what I want, I'm going to do what I want because I know there is an abundance and I will always have enough. That's how I live my life, you shouldn't live your life in fear of money. Now, coming back to recent years of purchases is the swanky Beverly Hills Ventures with a value of $45 million. The Tudor style home surrounds up a layout of 10,376 square feet accommodating 5 bedrooms and 12 bathrooms along with a loft ceiling and a walk-in closet. With the stunning looks, the home, built up with the facilities of a wood-fired oven, has a relaxing swimming pool and a lounge. If you think Ellen was the first celebrity to purchase, then you are wrong. The mansion first belonged to Max Muchnik, Will and Grace creator, which was later bought by Maroon 5 singer Adam Levine. She always clutches an ideology that buying the celebrity houses would help her to sell further down the line. With the never-ending surprises, this made the TV show host transform as a real estate mogul, possessing expensive properties under her control. Move on to the seat edges to check out more interesting materials. At this moment, you plunged with a clear picture line of the millionaire TV show host and how she spends crazy over her favorite things. Thus, she creates a wild fashion through TV shows and gains million dollars by pulling up the attention of viewers. We believe that the video has entertained your utmost. Check out our new videos to find the crazy information and ideas of the celebs. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe button. 
and bell icon so that you always get a notification of our videos, which eliminates a miss of our new videos of your favorite celebrities. Get along with us to keep track of interesting information that you never find out anymore. Inside Billie Eilish's fascinating real life story. In this video, we are going to talk about Billie Eilish's fascinating real life story. When someone becomes famous overnight, that means they achieved the success incredibly quickly. However, did Billie Eilish really become a hit in a single night after uploading her song Ocean Eyes to stay? and found out that Ocean Eyes had gone viral and everyone wanted to hear more about her. What was Billie Eilish's life like before she made it big? Let's talk about the evolution of her incredible life story, and what challenges she faced to become the most successful star, and how she started to give meaning to a new era in the music industry. You might just have a whole new vision for Billie when you learn the truth about her amazing journey. Billie Eilish is an American singer and songwriter. She is best known for her successful debut single, Ocean Eyes. Billie Eilish was born Billie Eilish Pirate Bayard O'Connell on December 18, 2001 in Los Angeles, California. She was born into a family of musicians and actors. She grew up with her elder brother. Her parents, Maggie Bayard and Patrick O'Connell, were popular figures in the American entertainment industry. She grew up listening to the music of The Beatles and Avril Lavigne. Her father loved making mixtapes of various artists. She followed her elder brother, Phineas O'Connell's music interest, and fell in love with music. Billie's mother wrote songs and her father played instruments such as the piano and the ukulele. The musical vibe in their house made Billie passionate about music. As expected, she followed her parents' career paths and started performing arts when she was five years old. She was homeschooled for most of her childhood. However, that did not stop her from participating in various activities. She loved acting in homemade films and also sang and danced. Dance was another passion of hers. She took dance classes in her early teenage years. She aimed at making a big career in the show business. She even made several short films. She shot them on a camera and edited them on basic movie maker apps. She was born with many talents. She joined a choir at the age of eight and sang with them for three years. By the time she was 11 years old, she was already writing and composing songs of her own. Phineas O'Connell, her elder brother, was the biggest impact in her life. He had his own band and had written the amazing song Ocean Eyes. They worked on that song tirelessly. She and her brother would go back to re-record parts until it was perfect to them. This hard work turned out to be her first biggest success. Billy performed the song and they released it online. After a day, it had a thousand plays. They didn't think it would go further than this. They were thinking that those plays were coming from Billy's famous friend's reposts. However, everything happened four years ago. That was incredible. In 2017, her brother Phineas O'Connell helped her record the single Bellyache. Billy started to give the meaning of a new era in the music industry. 2019 was the year that Eilish's impact on pop became unavoidable. In 2017, the singer launched her first EP, worked with major artists like Khalid and Lovely, and her songs had been streamed millions of times on Spotify and such. More importantly, in 2017, success of her debut EP, Don't Smile At Me, confirmed her as the most exciting pop artist of her age. Moreover, the EP showed up on important American and international music charts. That created a huge success on her career. Even Apple named her their newest Up Next artist. After her success, she got invited to the Ellen DeGeneres show and spoke about her budding music career. All that happened before she turned 17. Also on stage, her performances are amazing, but when she gets off, Things seem rather dark and adventurous for the young singer. Billy generally feels lonely and overwhelmed by the huge media attention. Thus, the singer has come to hate weekends. She doesn't enjoy being left to overthink. The most important thing right now probably would be maintaining my happiness, which I've been experiencing for the first time in many years lately, she said. She added that she's getting used to the attention. I like being famous. It's very weird, but it's very cool. She also emphasized another important point. It doesn't make you weak to ask for help. 
and you should be able to ask anyone for help. Everyone has to help someone if they need it. Another great thing was that Vanity Fair interviewed her when she was 15 and once again the next year. Her Instagram gathered over 6 million followers almost overnight and her career has gone from performing in front of 500 people to more than 40,000 in one year. Right now, the singer has more than 20 million followers on Instagram. In 2018, she released the singles Bitches Broken Hearts and You Should See Me in a Crown. There have been speculations about her debut album, which is supposed to be released sometime in 2018. Her brother has also confirmed the release of her debut studio album in the current year. Her newest album, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go, climbed up the top of streaming charts quickly, and her appearance at Coachella was more popular than some major artists who were headlining the show. Another amazing thing also happened at the music festival, which was meeting Justin Bieber, who was her first love. The singer has said that she would cry all the time just because he didn't know she existed. Bieber followed her on Instagram. He had seen a message she sent him years before. In it, she had wondered if they could talk. Her style, appearance, and the topics of her songs can be quite terrifying for some people, but young fans are loving them because of the openness and kindness. She sings about fears, depression, and mental issues because she suffers from depression, which has gotten worse over time. Her song, I Don't Want to Be You Anymore, talks about a girl who is loved by millions. The singer tried to explain why she feels a certain way or writes such sad songs, but her concerts are vibrant with just a bit of rebellious, punk rock attitude. The baggy look is also a significant part of her image. The oversized matching tees, shorts, and massive parkas and sweats that the singer often rocks has become part of her aesthetic. She never wears anything tight, as her fashion sense is more like a cyber goth. She also talked about how her appearance may change when she gets older. I'm gonna be a woman. I wanna show my body. What if I wanna make a video where I wanna look desirable? Not a porno, but I know it would be a huge thing. I know people will say, I've lost all respect for her. From the outside, many people think that Billy's life is easy, however, it is just the opposite. Being famous is never easy. Recently, her home address has leaked online and three fans showed up in a single day, including a creepy older guy who'd driven all the way from San Diego. She got very upset and scared. That is why she had a bodyguard sleep in the living room for a while in case of emergency. Billy also says, It was really traumatizing. I completely don't feel safe in my house anymore, which sucks. I love my house. Another fact about her life that got out to the public was her condition, Tourette's Syndrome. Someone made a video exposing her facial tics. She opened up about her disorder on Instagram. My tics are only physical and not super noticeable to others if you're not really paying attention, Billy wrote in the post. Okay, sorry, I just got attacked by fucking fly! These compilations you all have been making of my tics are low-key funny even when you all make fun of them. I know you're all confused as to what it is, so just to let you know, it's Tourette's. She also revealed that she's taught herself ways of suppressing the tics, but that only makes things worse after the moment is over. Meanwhile, the performer is grateful that her episodes are not as bad as others who suffer from it. She also talked about it on The Ellen DeGeneres Show. Ellen introduced the topic, saying, You spoke about something that I think is really important and brave that you didn't intend to speak about, but that you have Tourette's Syndrome and that it comes out at certain times. But I think that's amazing that you spoke about it because you kind of take away the scariness of it. Billy said it's something that she's lived with her whole life, and that those closest to her, like her family and friends, know Billy lives with Tourette's, but that she never mentioned it to the public for a reason. I just never said anything because I didn't want that to define who I was. Billy also said that talking about her disorder inspired many of her fans that also live with Tourette's, which in turn has helped her connect with them better. I think I also really learned that a lot of my fans have it, which made me feel kind of more at home with saying it, and also I felt like there was a connection there. Billy is clearly aware of the unwarranted criticism that could come for absolutely everything she does especially the fact that she doesn't smile in pictures. The singer has also talked about how smiling makes her feel weak. Billy shows that people are not as keen to see her the way she is. They'll always be haters. You wouldn't believe the shit people say about me. It's fucking funny though, because who's making money? Who's playing shows across the globe? Who's getting free shoes? Me. She also says not to be cocky or anything, but fuck you. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell.
Some stars don't have to work hard to stay lean, whilst others go to dramatic ends to get that look. Let's go on the road to transformation and see how some stars have changed their bodies and why it's made them feel better about themselves. Some stars even beat quarantine by losing 15, while most of us ate cake during the pandemic. Guilty. Rob Kardashian. Rob is so different from the other members of his family and he stays away from all the attention. So it was a nice surprise for all the fans when he came all slim to his sister Chloe's birthday bash. Everyone knows that Rob has struggled with his weight all these years and his sister Kim admitted on camera that he's not happy with how he looks. Kim revealed that his mental health has impacted his physical health, but his little daughter Dream inspires him to keep up the fight. Ever since Rob came to know he was type 2 diabetic, it is even more crucial that he keeps working on his health. All the luck to you, Rob. Rebel Wilson. Even though most of the time stars have to shed those extra pounds to get good roles, but for Rebel Wilson, it was totally different. According to her, her body size was in demand when it came to getting roles for plus size characters. She also revealed that having to gain weight to get roles made her feel stressed, and that the mental bit of staying fit was what took the most toll on her. But now, Rebel is on an intense fitness journey to get her self esteem back. From high power interval training to lifting weights, she isn't aiming to get a certain number on the weighing machine. She is simply trying to be at peace with herself once again. Ariel Winter Constantly being the centre of media attention is hard and modern family star Ariel Winter knows this all too well. A change in the medicine she was taking led to a dramatic weight loss. And then it felt as if all the people who had shamed her for weight gain were now blaming her for losing it. Ariel reports that she has had frequent social media messages asking what medicine she was taking, which we admit is a highly personal issue. As Ariel points out, the medicine has different effects on everyone. Though she is solidly against body shamers, she admits that the relentless negativity often disturbs her peace of mind. Mama June June Shannon, also known as Mama June, is no newcomer to reality TV. Her weight has often been the focus of comments and criticism and eventually led to yet another reality show. Mama June had the most intense weight loss journey ever. She lost over 300 pounds after having a sleeve gastrectomy. Khloe Kardashian Growing up, Khloe Kardashian claimed that she always felt like the crazy one in her family because of her weight issues. When her family Family's fame rose, Chloe knew that she needed to make a difference and committed herself to having her now notorious revenge hot bod. Long since hitting her target weight, Chloe was pregnant with her daughter True and once again had to concentrate her attention on slimming down. Although Chloe acknowledges the figures on the scale fluctuate from time to time, she's immensely proud of losing over 60 pounds of weight after her pregnancy. She prevents overindulgence while eating but acknowledges that her attention is on working out rather rather than constraining herself too much while eating. Charlie D'Amelio. Fans continue to connect with Charlie D'Amelio, a TikTok icon online. However, she wants people to stop obsessing over her looks. Charlie had to contend with fat shamers who said that she was overweight and at one time too skinny. Clearly, poor Charlie can't be herself. And did we note that she was only a teenager at the time? After fans pointed out that she's too skinny, Charlie urged people to support her and work on helping her instead of attempting to bring her down. Mariah Mariah Carey. Most claim that Mariah Carey looks incredible regardless of her age, but we don't think so. The age is irrelevant. She simply looks amazing. Mariah says she started to feel stuck in her body after adding 70 pounds of maternity weight, but she soon came back to her original form by focusing mostly on her food. Mariah claims that her diet is the reason behind 90% of weight reduction, and she tries her utmost to avoid extra calories. From from being consumed and to consume healthy products. She has decided on working out at least three days a week. As her day is too busy, she preserves herself by eating healthy snacks during the day. 
Adele. Every time her weight was brought into question, Adele has always come out shining and beautiful, slamming her critics. But when she was unexpectedly seemed a lot thinner on social media, viewers were out of their minds. Since then, Adele has not been coy about showing off and even changed into a top she debuted at Glastonbury in 2016. Talk about a drastic change. Clearly, viewers are curious to learn how she lost these pounds. Yet, in a classic Adele fashion, Adele is just interested in chatting about her songs and not her weight. Jennifer Hudson. It's not easy to shed weight and it may almost be as tough to hold off. That is the reason why we are so pleased with Jennifer Hudson's reduction of 80 pounds and her persistence with maintaining it for so long. But what is her big secret of coming down to a size 6 from a size 16? She obviously can't put endless hours at the gym due to her busy shooting life, but she keeps control of what she consumes. So when she's close to binge eating on bad food, she tries to delay and until the temptation goes away. It might sound a bit weird, but with her impressive performance, you cannot complain. Janet Jackson. According to her trainer, Paul Siblis, Janet began working out six weeks after she gave birth. Janet Jackson became the first one to acknowledge that losing 70 pounds was really tough. Whilst the trainings have rarely lasted over an hour and have been conducted four days a week, Paulette acknowledges that they are painful. The emphasis was on power training instead of aerobic cardio to help Janet lose fat fast. Paulette also makes sure that Janet's eating routine is balanced and she reports that 80% of her fat loss is because of her diet. Snooki. Snooki, or better known as Nicole Polizzi, was considered to have been a hardcore party girl on Jersey Shore. Yet, instead, she refused to go to the bar and started visiting the training centre with her personal trainer. Snooki practices four days a week and she begins another hour of aerobic exercise following an hour of heavy exercise. Snooki lost 50 pounds and got some exciting muscles as well. Her success is all the more remarkable considering that in high school she had an eating problem. Now, this star encourages healthy eating and a daily workout to all her fans. Kim Kardashian We all know that Kim Kardashian's a big champion of shapewear, but that doesn't mean that her exquisite shape is all shapewear. During pregnancy, with the Atkins 40 program, Kim once dropped an impressive 70 pounds. Now that she's back to her old size, her approach of consuming small quantities of nutritious items whilst providing periodic splurges is less restricting. Kim is still working intensely on strength training and acknowledges that she even hates cardio. Mike the Situation Sorrentino When Mike was eight months in jail, he took the opportunity to take up some good behaviour that made him shed 36 pounds. He started quickly fasting intermittently, which means that he only eats a limited amount of food per day in a fixed period. He continued to work out two or three times a day in addition to fasting. The Situation attempts to keep the flow running now that he's out of trouble. George Nava. Not just Mark, another television star who spent time in jail to create a hot body is 90 Day Fiancé star George Nava. Sentenced to 2.5 years incarceration, he tried his best during his hard circumstances. George claimed the prison was his life's lowest level, but he started exercising hard with a fellow convict. He would perform two heavy exercise sessions a day. Concentrating on multiple jogging activities, it was easy to resist the usual demons such as fast food and energy drinks so he shed a whopping £125. Jessica Simpson Following the birth of her first boy, Jessica Simpson's weight was £240. She knew that this had to go away, so she signed up to work with a personal trainer, Harley Pasternak, who made her follow a tested five-step programme to lose weight. Jessica focused on hitting her healthy goals for the day to get enough sleep, eat right, exercise, and spend an hour a day away from all screens. This was not an easy task, but after a lot of hard work and dedication, all of it paid off when Jessica lost a crazy £100. Jordan Woods Jordan Woods has been through a very public and traumatic split in relationship with her now ex-best friend Kylie Jenner and some people ask whether this motivated her to have her own revenge body or maybe she's just really attempting to show off her last phase of sportswear. Whatever may be the case, she looks fantastic and she's shed £30.
Ethan Supley. Ethan Supley, the star of My Name is Earl, weighed 530 pounds at one time. Not only did he go on to shed 220 pounds, but he also added up a lot of muscle. He seems almost unrecognizable today, having realized his bad relationship with food, which started when he was just five. He weighed more than 200 pounds by the time he was 10, yet through the years, because of his heavy eating patterns, he was continually adding the weight instead of losing it. Not only was he plagued by the temptation to eat at all times, but it was easier for him to get more jobs the heavier he became. Eventually, Ethan wanted to end the vicious cycle by repairing his diet patterns and working out hard. Drew Barrymore The Santa Claretta diet is not the only diet Drew Barrymore tried. This star was attempting to stay in slim condition for her series, so she turned to Marnie Alton, her longtime collaborator for fitness. What she says is that Alton worked her magic on inspiring her to change her relationship with her body. According to Drew, it's impossible for her to shed weight, so it requires a lot of time and effort to keep her in shape. But she managed to lose 20 pounds due to her diligent work and her unconditional support from Marnie. Simon Cowell. A lot of people have suffered with weight gain after the COVID-19 pandemic, but Simon Cowell made use of his free time in the pandemic by staying put. Not being able to go out made it easier for Simon to adhere to his food and fitness routine to resist temptations. He still misses the occasional bite of pizza, but his daily regime has helped him lose 60 pounds. Adrian Balon. This took a big lifestyle change for Balon. She believed that dieting was a superficial cure that had induced her to lose weight and to gain all of it back again very quickly in the past. This period, she wanted to concentrate on making positive improvements, such as choosing plant-based diets and changing her partnership with working out and eating well. Adrian insists she's trying to be healthy so her 20 pound weight reduction is a happy side effect, not the primary objective. Which one of these stars do you believe has undergone the most remarkable transformation? Let us know who you find the most motivational for you in the comment section below. Make sure you press the subscribe button and press on the bell icon to receive more exciting videos from us. Till next time. With one clean swipe is Jojo Siwa, the next child star to break loose and alter her image completely. She's not the first one to do that. Lindsay Lohan, Selena Gomez and the Sprouse brothers have skipped from cute kids to steaming hot adults on the red carpet. Speaking up on the screen, sporting some heavy black eyeliner is just some tactics that these stars in our list have used to distance themselves from their kid star status. And although some of them are now able to handle the process smoothly, many of them are not as elegant, often ending up in horrible mishaps on tabloids than on the red carpet. Jojo Siwa. Jojo made her debut with Dance Mums on reality TV, yet she soon left Abby Lee Miller and the organization biting the dust. She created her own mini fashion empire, one outfit at a time. Siwa is a dazzling splash of positive vibes, and the 17-year-old with her signature pony set and bright colors has got a big young fan base to drool over her. Whilst Jojo was characterized by Twitter because she didn't act her age, the YouTube star will not let haters bring her down and keeps on doing her own thing. She's getting older, but she's still the same old Jojo. Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande is a dashing woman of courage from playing naive on TV to being brutal on the charts. After her major success win and its spin-off Sam and Cat, Ariana was able to say thank you next to Nickelodeon and moved on to greener pastures in the music industry. Better fashion choices came with Ariana on the red carpet from casual to Couture, and her trademark cat ears and high set ponytail is so sensual. She hotly debuted her first studio album at the top of the Billboard 200 charts and her following studio albums did not go too badly either. In 2019, Forbes announced that the net worth of Ariana was $48 million. Ariana laughingly goes to the bank whilst haters keep hating in their rented homes. Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus had been playing Hannah Montana for four seasons and also ended up doing the movie as the adorable 
double twin student and secret pop star. Miley was able to alter her appearance when she eventually quit the Disney Channel series in 2011. In a 2019 interview telling Elle magazine, she said, I'm not a Disney pet, I'm a person. Miley went a little extreme when she became right through us with the wrecking ball. Most of us were unprepared for it, yet you can't blame her. After all, she is Miley. Selena Gomez, another Disney Channel star who was ready to move from the Mouse House Supreme to sizzling adulthood. And all that took Selena Gomez to totally demolish her cute girl image was a spring break in Florida. Jokes apart, Selena's last Wizards of Waverly Place episode broadcast in 2012. And while she was going to find herself, she chose a direction other than Miley's. Selena finally took off as an independent and went on to do solo stuff with three studio albums. The young star these days campaigns for WE days and her work with UNICEF has been inspiring fans all over. Keep on acting and singing, Selena. Demi Lovato Selena Gomez's former BFF, Demi Lovato, was also a Disney girl who grew up in both Camp Rock movies and Sunny with a Chance films. Demi's smile and strong voice have won us over. Her transition from Disney was, however, not so smooth. The star had some health issues along the way whilst coping with her emotional well-being through therapy. Demi tells Teen Vogue about her recovery. I really see a warrior. I don't see a winner yet, but I do see a warrior. So I see someone who's going to compete again. No matter what obstacles the singer and actress faces, we know she's in there for the long game. Josie Tota Josie Tota has moved from celebrity roles on Jesse, Glee and Liv and Maddie to the champions on the Mindy Curling production. Shortly after the show was cancelled, Josie wrote an emotional essay for the Time magazine where she revealed that she's transgender, sharing over the last few years I've realised that hiding my true self is not healthy. I know now more than ever I'm finally willing to take this step to become myself. I'm prepared to be free now. Lindsay Lohan Lindsay Lohan has always been doubling the trouble. In 1998, portraying twins in the Parent Trap reboot made her her a household star. There was no Disney reboot or TV series where we wouldn't find Lindsay Lohan for a long time. This ginger-haired actress hit the big time with the arrival of Mean Girls. The satire by Tina Fey soon became Lindsay's escape to Hollywood. Unfortunately, the star opted to be more in the tabloids than the big screen and her career crashed. Now, the latest single from her is about making a comeback with new music on the horizon. When the star tweets her track back to me, she notes the album is about finding and embracing oneself to cut off the distractions to step on to let go of the past. Bella Thorne. During Shake It Up, the teenage singer spun her way into our hearts with Zendaya. However, when the show ended in 2013, what was she going to do next? Films, albums and TV couldn't make her as interested as Shake It Up. But Bella continues acting and singing, making her brand shine. Bella also directs and creates art whilst appearing on some reality TV. Appearing as a swan on The Masked Singer even ended up as far as week eight. Debbie Ryan. Debbie Ryan is the lovable girl next door from the Disney Channel's Sweet Life on Deck and shows like Jessie. Just like former Mouse Girls Demi Lovato and Selena Gomez, Debbie came on Barney. Ready to sacrifice their image of being a kid actress, Debbie played a leading role in Netflix's Insatiable, sizzling up a bit too hot, to be honest. Debbie even took the opportunity to get privately married on a New Year's Eve wedding with the 21 Pilots drummer Josh Dunn. This was only recently disclosed in an interview with Vogue. Amanda Bynes. Appearing on Nickelodeon, Amanda Bynes was the poster innocent girl. She started out with a solo show named The Amanda Show, acting out different sketches. This soon followed by many successful roles in movies like What a Girl Wants, She's the Man, with stars like Channing Tatum. She even killed it on another TV series, What I Like About You, which ran for a whopping four seasons. While we might have to accept that Amanda fell into some bad times transitioning from being a teenage heartthrob into an adult, to her credit, she's trying to mend her life again. She's gotten engaged and she's working hard to graduate from a college in LA. Taylor Momsen. Beginning with the evocative role of Cindy Lou on The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, Taylor Momsen's adorable appearance had the audiences getting floored for her. But then it was her role as Dan Humphrey's little sister Jenny on Gossip Girl that made people really start looking out for her on TV. Gone out the window was the little star from Whoville and her place was a budding fashionista on the Met Gala a carpet. The drama on the silver screen mirrored the drama in real life on the set, with the star departing from the show in season 5. Demolishing her good girl image totally, Taylor became the lead singer in her own band, The Pretty Reckless. With some dark coll eyes, she's edgy, folks.
Vanessa Hudgens. Vanessa Hudgens was the crush of every teen boy, coming on like teenage flicks like Gabriella, and boy was she a good girl. But like all the other Disney girls on this list, she waited until her teenage years were over to knock off this good girl tag. Her fashion choices during Coachella have been doing rounds over social media. Well, we love that vintage hippie look for sure, but then it was her break in Sucker Punch and after coming on with Selena Gomez in Spring Breakers that she fit a bidding goodbye to her old image. Funnily now, she is making a comeback to her old roles with two made-for-Christmas movies, The Night Before Christmas and a sequel to The Princess Switch. Seems like being good is coming back into fashion. Raven Simone. She started off as an adorable little kid on The Cosby Show. Oops, we didn't know how dangerous Cosby was then. Sorry. Moving on, she broke the TV with That So Raven, but she couldn't get the Disney out of her completely. She climbed ranks with Disney and appeared all jazzed up on Disney, owned the ABC as a judge on The View. The star always gave an unfiltered piece of her mind on The View and then returned to That So Raven as the grown-up psychic Raven Baxter. Whilst many former child stars wanted to get Disney label off them as soon as possible, That So Raven star stuck around and lovingly worked with Disney. She admitted in an interview with Los Angeles Times and admitted that she loved her relationship with Disney and that Disney people didn't care about her orientation and were really supportive. Dylan and Cole Sprouse. If you had told us that the floppy haired twins from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, who also appeared on Friends, would become such hot bods, we would have totally not listened to you. The twins had the ideal Disney dream show living in a New York hotel growing up with their single mom. After disappearing from the public view for some time, they came back with a bang, with Dylan enacting the character of Jughead on Riverdale, which, by the way, if you have read the comics, you would never agree to do. But Dylan took up the challenge and honestly looked way more drool-worthy than Archie. He also worked on a comic book series for the past four years. Impressive. Did we mention that he's also dating hot model Barbara Palvin? Way to zoom past that childhood image, Dylan. Shia LaBeouf. OMG, where can we start with LaBeouf? From coming on Even Stevens as a kid, Shia made a total turnaround of this time as a kid and became a legend, even becoming a performance artist along the way. To doing stunts where anyone could say anything to his face, to wearing a hot paper bag many times in front of the cameras. Even on the red carpet, which said, I'm not famous anymore, but we don't agree. He is famous for doing an indie film like Peanut Butter Falcon. His co-star, Dakota Johnson, was all praises for him coming on Mary Claire and said that he was the greatest star of his generation. Eccentric that he is, we think he won't accept it to his face. Like every genius out there, Shia had his fair share of trouble and now he seems to be staying away from the many blockbuster films that he was initially part of. He's taking his time, choosing roles that he wants to do and picking up projects mindfully. Though certain childhood stars never lost their old image, some actors burst it open and did even more. Only time will tell which direction direction Jojo Siwa is going to take. Would she lose her teenage image and her dog Bobo? Don't lose Bobo, he's so cute. Doggos aside, puberty hits the child actors hard. You want to make more fans and still keep those that loved you along the way. What do you think Jojo Siwa will do next? Let us see in the comments section below, making sure you press the subscribe button for more awesome content from us. Thank you for watching and we would be back kicking ass soon. Like and subscribe right now or this spider will crawl in into your mouth whilst you're sleeping. <coughs> Welcome to Celeb Dazzle. Let's accept it. Sometimes we aren't ourselves. Sometimes we lose ourselves. Some lose it under all the pressure. Was it stress? We would never know for sure. But for now, enjoy these celebrities losing their mind and making Ellen DeGeneres look at them like they're Martians fresh out of their spaceship. Make sure you don't miss out on number one, as he's a special case. Really special. Number five, Jessica Simpson. From being the pinup girl for loads of teenage guys in the 2000s, Jessica Simpson has transformed into a virtual nobody. One time, she was so hot in the industry that her marriage with the 98 Degrees lead singer even got them their own TV show. The good old days, huh? Nostalgia. However, their marriage didn't age like a fine wine, it turned sour like vinegar instead, and that show didn't last. She continued with her fashion label and music, which we think was a wise choice. 
In May 2017, things went pretty bad pretty fast on The Ellen Show. I mean, I really do feel sorry for her here. Just look at her on the couch, totally out of her mind. You could see and tell that things were just not right. She couldn't catch her breath and forgot how to pronounce words, like she was reeling over from something. And when Ellen asked her a simple question, like, are you pregnant or not? She couldn't string simple sentences together, which smells like bad cheese. If you can't answer a simple yes or no question, I'm sorry, but something's woozy up there. Are you sure you're not pregnant? <laughs> Oh, yes. you were pregnant. Oh gosh, no. You're not. We pregnant. got an IUD. Is it not, nothing get it, it's gonna get in that uterus? Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> What's even funnier is that she totally went off on random monologues that were just weird for primetime TV, and some of them just make me feel gross when I remember them again. Yeah, not her best day. It became so funny that Ellen could not stop herself from laughing. She couldn't contain her laughter at Jessica's answers and kept looking at the audience as if to hint she had no clue what it all meant. Ellen, who's handled hundreds of celebrities on camera, was totally clueless. When Ellen made fun of Simpson, she just couldn't process it. Ellen remarked, you have a billion dollar fashion empire. Jessica laughed it off and said, it can happen to anybody. So, so but somehow you have a billion dollar business. <laughs> All right. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, it is awesome. It can happen for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> really? Really? Can it happen to anybody? Why is it not happening to me? What button do I have to press? Let's face reality, it cannot. Eventually, Ellen had to stop the interview and do that abruptly. I feel sorry for Ellen. Sometimes it can get really embarrassing. So what was up with her? Was she indulging in some sarcasm? Just reeling over. Maybe she left her stove on at home. I guess we'd never be able to tell, but it was just so cringe. I guess Ellen should keep a mental health expert on her show so she can save some production footage. I can definitely say that the guests weren't happy with that interview. And the same would be true for me if I was a fan of Jessica. Fortunately, I'm not. Number four, Katy Perry. To be honest, it's not always the celebrities who do dumb stuff. Sometimes Ellen is also off the mark and loses her game, even when she's so cool most of the time. And then things get pretty awkward for the guests on the show. Um, how are you supposed to react? Take for instance when Katy Perry was on the show and Ellen DeGeneres made the stupidest gaffe ever with one of her favourite guests, which sure made fun time for the audience who watched Ellen make this blunder of a mistake. So what happened is Ellen brought Perry on the show and it seemed that her memory was playing tricks on her that day. Ellen was playing one of her games in which she makes her guests answer questions in rapid fire. She asked Perry a question, who would she get married to? To which Perry replied, oh no, not again. Why do I have to marry again? His name is Russell Bland. Oh, that's right, I forgot about Russell. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember, you gave me some wedding gifts on this show. Yes. The crowd went wild at Ellen's remark. Ellen got thrown off the track and seemed confused. It looks like she'd forgotten the fact that Katy Perry was once married to comedian and ex-addict Russell Brand, which was again a short marriage by any standards, but made headlines around the world. It seems it's not a big enough reason to forget about it, so is it obvious that Katy Perry went flat like a tire to Ellen's question? People who have been through horrible marriages dread the name of marriage again, so Perry's phobia is imaginable. But what cannot be excused is Ellen's memory, because she found herself gifted Katy Perry some gifts for the newlyweds on her show. Oops, another gaffe which is pretty bad considering that it was her own show and the same couch and the same show and the same guest just a few months back. So yeah, not cool Ellen, but I guess we can forget this one because Ellen seems to work really hard and you do make mistakes. What makes this mistake even more embarrassing is Katie motioning to the show producers to cut this segment by moving her hands. But guess what? They did not, making this one of the truly most embarrassing moments on The Ellen DeGeneres Show.
Number three, Ryan Seacrest. Let's keep our countdown rolling to more goof-ups and ah, so embarrassing moments. But this one is excusable because it wasn't actually anyone making a blunder from a bender, but this was a case of a mistaken identity. Not of a person, of an item wrapped as a gift, which really makes it one of the most cringeworthy moments on the show. Let's see what happened. So, Ryan Seacrest came on the show and gave a gift to Ellen, which Ellen opened and it was a lovely bingo set. Gift on points, Ryan. Ellen loves games and she even had her own game show, so this was a very well thought out gift. Unknown to Seacrest at the time, Ellen had also placed a gift bag next to where Ryan was sitting and as soon as he found out and took it out, the very next moment he put it back all red faced. More gifts? It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. I don't quite, I don't know what that is. We can't blame him. It looked exactly like what Ryan thought it was. You know, a certain play thing for adults. So we can understand why Ryan found it explosive. But actually, it was a blue stamper for bingo. Obviously, Ellen and the audience knew what Ryan was feeling like and Ellen couldn't help but laugh. But that was what Ryan's reactions were like. They were hilarious. It took Ellen ages to stop laughing and it would only confirm Ryan's suspicions that he was being pranked with an adult toy. Later, she told him what it was and to play it cool. So Seacrest took hold of his new stamper to start a new game of bingo. Seacrest is too innocent as a guest and Ellen seemingly played a cruel joke on him. Poor Ryan, I think I would have had the same reaction. Number two, Kathy Griffin. Kathy Griffin surely deserves the spot on number two because she's one of those celebrities who would probably never again be on the Ellen DeGeneres show because she messed up big time. It's not because Ellen and Kathy are competitors or something. I mean, they can't be. Ellen is way bigger than Kathy. And Kathy made a request of Ellen. Ellen denied that she couldn't do it. And as a result, Griffin went off on one on the Ellen show. Ellen knows how to respond to something like this. And Griffin has not been on the show ever since. What crime could Griffin have done to get this treatment, you ask? Well, it's not exactly what you could ever imagine. Griffin wasn't exactly mean to Ellen. She just asked if she'd paid a tribute to Joan Rivers when she passed away. Rivers, as we all know, was the first female host on TV and even took over Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show before she got her own show and life full of fame. Not to forget, Joan was a comedian like Ellen and Griffin. You put all these things together and you get someone who does deserve a tribute on a show like Ellen's, but that's not what Ellen thinks. Whilst it's true that Joan launched the careers of many people, she wasn't at all a goody-goody. She was quite infamous for her fights with many people, both on the silver screen and in real life. She even made a prank phone call once, fooling an operator to get even with someone she was fighting bad Joan. Also, her comedy style was more of a roasting of other people rather than ordinary comedy and Ellen knows all this. Ellen refused to do the tribute to Rivers when she died because she knew that Joan was not exactly a kind person and her comedy was mean. Obviously, she didn't want to praise that on national television. Apparently, Kathy didn't like that and even ended up calling Ellen an untalented hack, which we know is a white-faced lie, and got into a war of words with Ellen, which is just unimaginable. But after all, you can't fight with Ellen and you have to make amends. So Griffin tried to play it nice, but it was too late. Ellen was asked about a band that came in place of Kathy and Ellen, said that it was too hard to be banned from the show if you've never been on it in the first place. Oops. Number one, Kanye West. Kanye West is one of the biggest rap stars, but he's also one of the most notorious people on the planet. This year, he filed his paper for the presidential race and he can even become President Kanye for all we know, which is a big problem because of his behavioral problems, which are aggravated by the fact that he was diagnosed with bipolar and refuses to take medication, which will help him with this disorder. Because he says that medicine clogs his mind like a dirty sink. 
Right, Kanye, you lay off those meds. You're better and far more entertaining to watch without the medication. But things sometimes do get plain awkward and embarrassing to watch. Listen to the interview in 2016 when he came on Ellen's show and he did this thing, pumped the crowd and everyone went on for him. But then Ellen asked him a simple question. Do you regret any of your Twitter posts? This question was on point because Kanye had around this time started coming out with the fact that he was struggling with bipolar disorder and he would go off on Twitter on erratic rants for no reason. So the question was in good jest and not entirely off topic. Usually Ellen asks her guests questions like these, but Kanye felt enraged and started off on a monologue slash rant which lasted for six whole minutes and surprisingly it wasn't about his twitter posts he started talking about his career in music and fashion and his drawn swords with the media and he kept going on and on he would talk to ellen and he would animatedly talk to the camera talking to the audience and things but yet he didn't stop for six whole minutes Ellen just sat there, frozen, not knowing what to do, and she took this whole rant, was smiling to the camera when it focused on her. Obviously, she wasn't going to interrupt while no one from the audience wanted to hear just the guest speak non-stop. And then some of the comments started getting weirder and weirder. Ellen obviously seemed in stress, like she wanted to get this over and done with. I was thinking of the poor audience. My heart goes out to them. I wouldn't want to be them. Coming out so many miles to see Ellen and your favourite star, but your favourite star is going off his rocker. Have mercy, oh lord. It was proof that Kanye West was not exactly mentally stable enough to be the president, which could make him the second such president. I hope Ellen doesn't have him on her show again because it was straight up painful or hopefully she won't ask him questions like these which will trigger him again it's not ellen's fault she just simply didn't see it coming so what do you think which celebrities went too far and tested ellen's patience let us know in the comments below we promise we would let ellen know so she's better prepared for next time and doesn't call these guys over please like this video and subscribe to celeb dazzle for more videos like this It doesn't matter how much dose you get of the Kardashians, but I'm sure that you are missing the vitals on Chris and Caitlyn's relationship. You may have seen them fighting on camera, but do you know once they used to work together on a show? Let's understand what made their relationship so sour that they can't tolerate each other for even a second from a time where they were so mad about each other. All of us know that Caitlyn Jenner was not Chris's first catch. Our files show that she met her first husband when she was just a teenage girl who was in a relationship with another guy. She was dating a golfer, Cesar Sanado, who just passed away back in 2011, and at the time, he was 10 years older than her. Chris complains that Cesar would spend a lot of time on the road, leaving a young girl really alone. And in his absence, she fell into love with another older man, Robert Kardashian. Yeah, yeah, we all know it sounds really lovey-dovey, but they had their fair share of problems in getting married. Robert and Chris went apart and Robert started seeing Priscilla Presley. No, Chris didn't take that to heart. She spent her breakup a mile high in the sky, literally, because she found work as a flight hostess. But eventually, love found a way and Robert moved back into her life. And Chris moved to his Beverly Hills home. Well, it wasn't all exactly glitz and glam. It turned out he was really stingy and he himself rode luxury cars and insisted that Chris pay for her own tyres for her old, battered Mazda. He used to tell his friends that he wanted her to value money. Well, those days were soon behind once they got married. And although her hands were soon in money, she was also neck deep in new responsibilities. They went to their honeymoon and she came back pregnant with her first child, Kourtney Kardashian. Then along came Kim, Chloe, and Rob, new members of the Kardashian family. 
And after that came what she calls in her own words her lowest point in her life. She started an affair with trainer Todd Waterman and when the news reached Robert's ears, boy, he wasn't happy. He filed for divorce. Then after being separated from Rob, she went for a blind date set up by a friend. There she met Caitlyn Jenner and they soon fell in love. By this time, Caitlin was past two divorces and was ready for a third marriage. Caitlin tells us that her first wife, Christy Crownover, knew the truth about her gender identity. And like Chris, Christy was also an ex-flight attendant and she tried her best to support Caitlin with her money and emotional support. They also had two children, Burton and Cassandra, but later they had split. Chrissy says that it wasn't because Christy didn't accept Jenna, it was because Jenna had trouble accepting her own self. The truth, however, made life difficult for her second wife, Linda Thompson. She said she had no idea before Caitlin spilt the beans. Caitlin had two sons who later said they felt abandoned after their father's divorce. Caitlin said she had no complaint with Linda for not staying with her, but her second failed marriage made her feel embarrassed about herself. She decided to keep up her X-Files secret. Now, let's come to our favourite chapter, when lives of Caitlin and Chris intersected. At that time, Chris only had $200 left and four kids to bring up. Despite her life struggles, that Chris didn't fall head over heels for Caitlin and they married in just five months. After she had an official divorce with Robert, of course, and as you know, we're talking about Chris Jenner here. She didn't just act like Caitlin's wife, she also acted like her manager. You can't imagine this right now, but there was a time when Chris didn't have a lot of money, but she was ready to work hard and hustled on Caitlin's past as an Olympic athlete. They started their own venture of stair climbing equipment and put together a tacky infomercial. This turned out to be a big hit and pulled the family out of their money woes. And on the side, Caitlin was trying to be a good stepfather to Kim, Chloe, Rob and Courtney. The kids did give him a hard time, especially Chloe. Chloe went through a painful miscarriage and there were worries that she would never have any more children. Caitlin expressed her own worries about being able to father more children and she revealed to Chris that she had taken medicines which could impact her fertility. But Chris mistook that Caitlin was talking about performance enhancing pills during her Olympic career instead of female hormones. At that time, Chris looked for support in her dear friend Nicole Brown Simpson, who gifted Chris some nice looking maternity clothes to prove that she would soon conceive. But it was a very sweet move. We all know Nicole didn't survive long enough to see Chris become pregnant again. She named the newborn Kendall Nicole Jenner in memory of her slain friend. And after that, Chris and Caitlin would have another daughter, Kylie, together. I'm sure you know her. Chris and Caitlin agreed that they have a lot of nice time together despite their hardships, but there's one issue that they don't meet head to head at all, Caitlin's transition. According to Caitlin, she was already on female hormones for four years, even before she met Chris. She also says that she was out in the open with her identity from the start. And she says that Chris knew what the truth was even before their marriage. But Caitlin maintains that they agreed that they could work through this as a team. Even when Caitlin said that they were happy together, she agrees that they were not exactly perfect. She reveals at times she felt like she was a punching bag for Chris, initially handling the family's money matters made a lot of sense, but after some time, Caitlin grew wary of never seeing her money coming from keeping up with the Kardashians. But Chris has her own story on this, saying that she was the one who was spending all the money in the household. Even when there were some hard feelings about money, Caitlin doesn't regret doing the show, and says that it didn't impact her marriage with Chris negatively. But really, there's more to this issue than meets the eye, and Chris said she didn't know anything about Caitlin's secret idea. Identity. She said that she was angry because she found it in a business meeting about Caitlyn in her own news show on TV. We've seen our fair bit on Keeping Up With The Kardashians and it seems that Chris isn't too keen on telling us what was happening when the camera was not on. As surprised as the viewers might be, Chris does like some privacy on some matters. 
Chris also says that she and Jenna had a nice marriage and that she's totally clueless about Caitlyn's gender identity. She also said that Caitlyn lied about the real reasons her first two marriages didn't last. Chris came out and said that Jenna's behaviour often seemed irrational and weird to her. She tried finding out what was the cause, but she won't divulge anything. Chris says that if she wasn't really happy with herself, how can she be in the marriage? Which hits home with what Christy Crownover said about her marriage with Caitlyn. Chris said she always worked hard to support her family and said it was Caitlyn's fault that she was not happy with herself. So the most famous mama manager maintains that she had no clue about Caitlyn being a woman. But it seems that Chloe revealed she had hints about what was up. Kim revealed that when she was in her 20s, she saw Caitlyn dressed like a woman and she panicked. Kim went off to Courtney's house and both of them searched online to find out what could be up with their stepdad. But Caitlyn called and told Kim not to tell anyone. Even though it was something new to hide for Kim and Courtney, it was revealed that Kendall and Kylie had known this ever since they were children. According to Kendall, Caitlyn used to wake up in the early hours and dress like a woman before getting into normal clothes and sending them to school. She said that on many instances she saw Caitlyn doing this, but she didn't register what was happening. When Kylie was a teenager, Caitlyn and her had some rough patches, but growing up the two of them grew close together. Chloe was not upset with the fact that Caitlyn came out, but she didn't like that Chris found out in a business meeting only when money got involved. She said there was pressure to accept this fact all of a sudden, and she didn't get a lot of time to process her feelings without being the centre of attention. This opened up a strange period of time between the two, and Chloe says that because of them, they didn't speak for six whole years. And apart from this, the children of the Jenner family were really surprised by Caitlin's book, The Secrets of My Life. They said that they were happy with their stepdad's transition, but they said there was no use doing their dirty laundry in public. Kendall was always really happy with her dad, and even she wasn't happy with how Caitlin pictured Chris in her book. She was also weirded out by Caitlin's complaints about Chris's original children. So how are things holding up years down the line? Caitlin is now really close with Kendall and Kylie, and her supermodel daughter says she wants to follow in her dad's footsteps to become an Olympian. Olympian athlete someday. She's also been through a lot of struggle with Chris and the rest of her family, but all of them still speak to each other. And the most important thing is that Caitlyn is back on the family party invite list. Chris has always been seen taking the higher road with her children's father. It seems she's putting her action where her mouth is. What do you think about Chris and Caitlyn being in touch again? Is it okay? Or do you think they should spend some more time apart to allow the old trauma to heal? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.